What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about Cha Ching Shadows Linger by Glenn Cook. So, for those that don't know, that's book number two in the uh, Black Company series. Uh, it's also book number two in the Omnibus, Books of the North. Um, and for those of you at home, just know that there is going to be spoilers for book number one, The Black Company. Normally, I try to keep things fairly vague and spoiler-free, but I have decided for this series of reviews, I will be doing spoilers for the previous books. So if you haven't read The Black Company yet, I suggest and I recommend you get out there and do it. Uh, it's a very imaginative tale. Uh, it's one that does acquire a little bit of focus and work but it does pay off, and I tell you what, Shadows Linger is really a treat for those that have made it over that hill. Let's get into it. So in Shadows Linger, we pick up with the Black Company several years after the Battle of Charm, but the Black Company is not in high spirits here. They are basically still very much at battle with the Rebels. Then certain members of the Black Company will be assigned to investigate a village named Juniper. Now the interest in Juniper is because there's a connection to the Barrowland. And now the reason for the interest in the Barrowland is because there's a connection to the Dominator, the lady's husband, who we know is supposed to be a much worse motherfucker than the lady herself. Now, one of the first things you'll notice that's different about Shadows Linger from the Black Company is that we're getting another perspective. One that isn't just Croker. We get a third-person perspective of Marion Shedd. Now, Shedd is in somewhat cahoots with Raven, and we know Raven from the first book, who at the end becomes basically a deserter of the Black Company, but he's also the guardian of who we know to be the reincarnation of the White Rose, the deaf mute girl, Darling. Both of these perspective threads revolve around a mysterious castle known as the Black Castle. Now this thing has just sprouted up around Juniper just kind of out of nowhere. Now the Black Company's connection is due to the Dominator and they are in fear that this is his gateway to get out and back into the world. But the other thread being Marion Shedd is where he's connected to it is his quote unquote like business arrangement here with Raven. And this is kind of a sinister one that really does play out desperate times call for desperate measures kind of thing. One of the first things I want to talk about is the book's pacing because for those rolling off of the Black Company, they'll probably find this book's pacing like a breath of fresh air. Now, there, I'm not saying there isn't jarring moments in this book, but it's certainly a more smooth ride, and it's easier to hang on from beginning to end. I do think that's because Cook made this book uh, a much more confined experience. There is some traveling, but it's kind of kept down to a minimum, and we are very confined to this, you know, village of Juniper, really, but that gives us the time to really focus on our players are you know for one thing we have spent time a whole book's worth of time so we are familiar with our characters and that makes it easy for one thing but at the same time without us just jumping clear across continents you know in the the most jarring way here we're we're at a place we're taking the time we're fleshing things out and it feels a little bit more natural and not so much just being smashed in your face the next thing I want to talk about is the tone and the overall vibe of this book because I think it's more dark and sinister than The Black Company. Now, The Black Company is a dark book. It's a dark military fantasy. This thing is kind of known for being one of the forefathers of Grimdark. And, but this one, The Shadows Linger, for the, the, its time, its era, was probably one of the most dark and sinister reads of its time, for sure. And that's probably because of this Black Castle. Like, the Black Castle is pretty sinister and the interactions that our characters have with it and just the descriptions of it, Cook does an amazing job of capturing these horror elements, this scary thriller atmosphere. It's very much just like he was able to pull off in book one when we were on our supernatural beast hunt of the for Velaka. Here, we're doing the same thing. All our interactions with the Black Castle are creepy. They're sinister. They are dark and disturbing when you really peel them back and look at them. And keeping with this darkness, it's just, man, I'm telling you, like I said earlier, desperate times require desperate measures, and we will see characters and just how far they're willing to go to secure themselves or the ones that they care about. Uh, it's just a kind of how far are you willing to go 
kind of tale. And it really does bring this thing kind of from a military fantasy way more into like a thriller vibe. Another thing I really liked what Cook did here was with the magic and just his wizards here in the book because coming off of the, the first book, I would say that the magic system is still very soft and still very confusing in some areas, but he does give you little bits, you know, little bits and pieces that make it a little bit more hard and rough around the edges instead of it just being a completely soft and unexplainable system. There is mention of, you know, learning spells and whatnot here, and each wizard seems to have their own kind of list of spells. Another thing I really liked with what he did here is, you know, there's obviously some tension going on where our prankster wizard, One-Eye and Goblin, there that levity is just not here as much. We can see that times have soured our men, you know what I mean? Like, things are just not okay, and we can see that even in this magic. We're just not getting the prankster magic that we once were, and we can feel that tension, as well as we're dealing with the remnants of the Taken. The ladies, 10 that were taken, are very much reduced down. We have a reinvigorated limper, and then we have the new Taken, which are only like two or three of them. So there's just not much firepower here behind the lady like there once was, but I will say the limper makes a fucking show here, man. That guy kicks ass. All his displays of magic is just action-packed and horror-fueled. Just mm, amazing. The other thing I really liked that Cook did here was just his work with the company themselves. We will see our company be tested. You know what I mean? This ride in the ladies' service has not been a smooth one. But they're also men that like to honor their contract. But we will see this thing play out and they will be tested once again. Just like we're kind of watching something kind of play out where we're slowly walking into the darkness of the human mind. We're also seeing a little bit of like the opposite direction where people are walking out of the darkness into the light. Now, as far as my two cents for the slow and the struggling, yes, I think that Shadows Linger is a great book for you, especially if you've already read The Black Company. For those that have read book one, you really owe it to yourself to continue this series or at least to try book two. For those that might have been frustrated with book one, I think you'll find a smoother, easier to digest story here, one that'll kind of get you back on board. If not, you know, not every book is for everyone. But I still kind of am a firm believer of once you're in the black company, the only way out is feet first. All right, guys. As always, thanks for spending some time down here at the channel and to Glenn Cook. A kadoosh. Two thumbs up, sir. I salute you. Like I said, feet first. And for those that are interested in this series, guys, we're doing the read-along. There's still plenty of time to catch up. These books are not that long. They're not that dense. They do pose some problems for you not to just kind of smash right through them, but at the same time, they're easy reads. I know that sounds a little confusing, but all I'm trying to get across to you guys is you can join us. Trust me, there's plenty of time. I'll have a link in the Discord, so just come on down and join, all right? All right. If you're new, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel, guys. As always, peace.